When someone goes missing, the first thing on everyone's mind is an investigation. But once it's been a few years, it's usually assumed the worst has happened. Which makes it all the more insane when out of nowhere, it turns out they've been alive this whole time. Welcome back friends, I'm your host Kennedy, and today on Most Amazing we are counting down some of the most shocking missing persons cases I have ever read about. So get ready cause this is the top 10 missing people who were found alive after years. Coming in at number 10 is Lawrence Joseph Bader. At the time of his disappearance in 1957, Bader was in some hot waters financially, in trouble with the IRS, and with a wife who was due any day with the couple's fourth kid. Bader was overwhelmed by the world around him and believed there was only one thing he could do. So one night in 57, after paying the premium on his life insurance policy, Bader packed his suitcase, kissed his wife, and said he was going on a fishing trip. Next, he rented a boat, despite being warned there was a dangerous storm heading his way, and sailed off. The next day the boat was found washed up on the shore, empty, with no sign of Bader or his luggage. After an investigation that proved fruitless, Bader was declared dead, and his family was devastated, but went on to live their life without him for the next 8 years. That was until his niece ran into a strangely familiar man who looked just like her supposed to be dead uncle. The man denied being who she thought he was, but later fingerprints confirmed that the man who went by the name Fritz Johnson was indeed the long lost Lawrence Bader. But there was a twist. Bader, or Johnson as he now went by, had no recollection of his former life, and appeared to have suffered amnesia. But now found alive, his former wife was required to repay the life insurance and break off her engagement with the new beau since she was Catholic. Some say the amnesia was all an act but he also had a sizable brain tumor that others believed could have caused the memory loss. Either way, it's a wild story. Coming in at number 9 is Timothy Carney. While on his way to work in September of 2004, Timothy realized he was running a little late and called his employer to let him know. But when he never showed up, his colleagues began to feel worried. Then later, after his car was found abandoned, family and friends of the 25 year old began to fear that he may have been kidnapped, and began renting billboards pleading for his safe return home. Sadly, no such calls with his whereabouts were ever made, and eventually the case went cold. But seven years later, the family got the strangest news, that their son's missing persons case had been cleared from the national database as he had finally been found. However, after a brief moment of relief, they were next informed that Timothy was not interested in speaking with them, nor would he permit that his location be revealed. Well, no one is quite sure exactly exactly what he was doing while hiding out for 7 years due to the fact that he's declined to go into detail, his parents suspect he got wrapped up with a local church that has on more than one occasion been accused of cult like behavior. If that's true, he certainly wouldn't be the first victim of a cult that convinced its victims to stay away from their family. However, Timothy has allegedly denied the claims that his disappearance had anything to do with that. So really, who knows what the hell happened. Coming in at number 8, Lula Gillespie Miller. Soon after bringing Bringing her third little one into the world in 1974, Lula mysteriously signed her kids into her parents' custody, left her home, and walked off without a trace. Soon after she disappeared, her parents filed a missing persons report. Then, about a year later in 1975, the family received a letter from Lula. And although relieved that she was alive, that was the last they heard from her for years. For the next 41 years, still considered a missing person by authorities, Lula stayed silent, away from her family and living her life. She never committed any crimes while in hiding, nor was she running away from any that anyone knew of, and so the great mystery of why a woman ran away from her life remained a mystery. Of course, there were many investigations over the 41 years that looked into her disappearance, some believing she had taken her own life, others believing she was kidnapped, until finally in 2016, authorities tracked her down in a small town in South Texas, where she had apparently been living since the 90s under an assumed name. Once found, Lula declined to give any explanation about her disappearance from her life in Indiana, but did grant her contact information to be given to her family so that they could reach out if they wanted to. 
you. Coming in at number 7 is Denise Bolser. When Denise Bolser's husband came home on January 17th, 1985, he was horrified to find a threatening note that read, we've got your wife, and immediately contacted the authorities so that they could start the investigation. A few days later, police discovered her husband's pickup truck abandoned at the airport with Denise's social security, birth certificate, and credit cards all inside. But things took a turn a few months later when a courier service where she worked as a bookkeeper accused her of embezzling nearly $100,000. And by 1986, police were able to charge her with the crimes in absentia, now putting together the puzzle pieces of this strange case. However, in one last twist, the embezzlement charges against her were dropped, leaving everyone just as confused as they were at the beginning. Fast forward 16 years, and a PI named Shirley Casey discovered that runaway Denise was hiding out in Florida under the name Denise James. And when authorities went to confirm the lead, they found out that Denise had started a whole new family that were completely unaware of her sordid past. Denise claims she ran away after her ex-boss threatened her life, drove her husband's truck to the airport, and never looked back. Coming in at number 6 is Michelle Whitaker. After being dropped off at a truck stop by a friend in August of 2002, Michelle vanished into thin air. At first it was believed that her friend may have had something to do with her disappearance until one of her co-workers, Heather, disappeared one month later. Unaware of the connection with Michelle at first, police immediately focused on Heather's boyfriend, Jonathan Vick, who happened to be a suspect from a previous unsolved SA case. But once they realized the connection between Heather, Michelle, and Jonathan, they began to feel worried that they had a homicide case on their hands. Police began looking for any sign that Michelle still could be alive, but her credit report and social security showed no activity for years. And although they didn't have any proof yet, they began to really worry that Michelle had been killed. Then in the summer of 2008, six years after Michelle disappeared, a woman was watching an episode of Forensic Files and was shocked to see one of the victims of a killer featured on the episode was none other than her next door neighbor. Confused, she called the police to let them know that she was in fact alive and living in Oregon. In August of 2008, police officially announced that Michelle had been found alive, apparently completely unaware that she had been the subject of a killing investigation. But why did she run away? Apparently, at the time she went missing, Michelle had recently been arrested for a DUI and was mistakenly released early from jail. So she ran away way to start a new life. Coming in at number 5 is Cynthia Ann Parker. By the early 1800s, European colonization was resulting in major population drop in indigenous villages. As a result, some territories resorted to kidnapping as a way to increase their numbers. One of the most famous was on May 19th, 1836, during the Fort Parker Massacre, when 9-year-old Cynthia Ann Parker was taken from her Texas farm and brought to live amongst the Comanche. Now, as far as the Texans were concerned, Concerned, Parker was missing for 20 years, and they continued to search for her at her father's request. But little to their knowledge, Cynthia had actually become completely assimilated among the village. When first brought in, she was adopted by a couple who raised her as their own, and eventually she married the chief, Petacuna, with whom she had three children. It is believed that Cynthia would have stayed with the Comanche until her dying days. However, in 1860, the Texas Rangers finally tracked her down. and believed Believing that they were rescuing her, raided the village, killed her husband along with many other civilians, and brought Cynthia and her daughter back to her childhood home. Her reunion with her white family was not the storybook her father expected. She was angry that she was forced to leave behind her two sons, and never really assimilated back into white civilization. Banned from ever returning to the Comanche, Cynthia was forced to live the rest of her life under the supervision of her brother and uncle. Then after her daughter died from pneumonia in 18 1864, with nothing else to live for, Cynthia slipped into a deep depression, eventually refusing to eat or drink until she died in 1871. Coming in at number 4 is Petra Pazitska. The year was 1984 when 24 year old Petra went to the dentist and never returned home. As is often the case with disappearance of young women, police immediately feared and suspected that she had been killed. So a massive search for the college student began. For a while, after her mistake,
mysterious disappearance, Petra's case was featured on a true crime show, and then in 1987, a suspect for her homicide was found. Or so they thought. The man, identified as Gunter K, confessed to police that he killed Petra, as well as another teen girl in the same part of Germany. Frankly, the police had no reason to believe he was lying, and even after he withdrew his confession, it was still believed he was the killer. By 1989, Petra was officially declared dead, and for the next 26 years, the world believed she died at the hands of Gunter K. That was until 2015, when a woman named Mrs. Schneider called the police after her apartment was robbed. But when she was unable to produce any ID, she eventually fessed up to being the missing woman. Evidently, she had managed to escape out of the public eye by never opening a bank account, or getting her driver's license, or a social security card. But because she hadn't actually committed any criminal activity, she couldn't be charged with anything. To this day, Petra refuses to explain why she went into hiding, and police say she was not interested in providing the public or her family with any further information. Coming in at number 3, BK Doe. In 2004, a Burger King employee discovered a naked man covered in fire ants sleeping next to one of the dumpsters in the alleyway. Disturbed and worried, the employee immediately called the police, who took the stranger to the hospital. Once admitted, hospital staff tried to get information from him, but he was unable to recall his name, so he was entered into hospital records as Burger King Doe. As the days went by, BK, as he was referred to, began to recall some things. He knew he had three brothers, and he knew his birthday was August 29, 1948. But still, his actual identity remained a mystery to him and everyone around him. Years went by, and he eventually named himself Benjamin Kyle and began living a new life. At one point in time, he was actually on the FBI's missing persons page, which was the first time the Bureau had ever put a missing persons report out for someone whose location was known. He even appeared on an episode of Dr. Phil. But no matter what Benjamin did, he began to lose hope that he would ever figure out who he really was. But incredibly, in 2016, a genealogist came to the rescue. As it turns out, Benjamin was actually William Burgess Powell, a man who had been missing since 1976. However, the mystery did not end there. Even though he now had a name, there was still a huge gap. He had already been a missing person for 28 years before he was found by the Burger King dumpster, and there was no record to show where he was all those years or why he disappeared in the first place. Coming in at number 2, Carlos Sanchez Ortiz. After receiving his medical degree in 1996, promising young doctor Dr. Carlos, who secretly suffered severe depression, decided he'd had enough of the chaotic world around him and wandered off into the woods without any warning. But after a 14 year long search by the Spanish authorities left them without answers, the case pretty much went cold and Carlos was officially declared dead in 2010. So imagine how the two mushroom pickers that were foraging a national park off the coast of Tuscany felt when they ran into him. Despite being missing for nearly 20 years, and considered legally dead for five, Carlos was in fact very much alive. He was just living his own life in solitude as far away from civilization as possible. Nervous that he might be dangerous, the hikers ran away to get a ranger and brought him back to the site. The ranger asked a few questions about who he was, to which Carlos showed an expired passport. However, Carlos was not looking to be found. In fact, he was quite annoyed, and mentioned he was now going to need to move his camp so as not to be discovered by anyone else. And last up in our number one spot today is JC Duggard. On the morning of June 10th, 1991, 11 year old JC was walking to the bus stop when a suspicious gray car pulled over and tased her until she was unconscious. This tragedy, of course, ensued a giant investigation, as well as multiple search parties, but as days turned into weeks and weeks turned into years, local authorities began to lose hope. Meanwhile, JC was, in fact, alive, chained up in Philip and Nancy Garrido's shed in the backyard and assaulted daily by her captor. At the time, Philip was on parole from a previous essay and kidnapping charge, but despite multiple visits from his officers, the backyard was never searched, and JC remained hidden from the public. For the next 18 years, she was a prisoner, forced into bearing and raising two of Philip's offspring, and eventually gave up all hope of escaping her living nightmare. But one day in 2009, Philip, who I should also mention was a self-proclaimed evangelist, 
brought his and JC's daughters on an excursion to Berkeley attempting to organize a religious event on the campus. But the event manager felt that something was off with the man, and how the girls were acting around him, so she got campus police to run a background check. It didn't take long before they figured out his history, and with that, his parole officer was immediately contacted. Thankfully, Duggard was rescued from her prison in the backyard, and the disgusting people that kidnapped and tortured her were sentenced to a lifetime in prison. Well, that's all I have for you today, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time. <music>